G'day everyone and welcome to another week, another episode of Aussie Max Zone. How you going? Well, are you over the Easter break? We just got over Easter and now we're into the, the Anzac Day festivities and, and remembrance and all that sort of stuff. So I've got a little Anzac Anzac uh, uh, thing for us to have a look at later on. But uh, before we do that, this is Aussie Max Zone and this is another episode and it is brought to you by Aussie Tech Heads Web Hosting. And you can find them at athwebhosting.com.au. So go grab yourself some good Australian hosting. All right, now to uh, go through this week's episode, let's have a chat to Jace. Hello, Jace. How are you going? I'm well, Glenn. Hello, everyone. And uh, yes, uh, another week and a very uh, nice week as well, uh, rounded out nicely with public holidays on the uh, Monday and Friday. And uh, that's to right. all you diggers out there, happy uh, Anzac Day. Yes, yes. And uh, that's a, but this time of year, it's uh, full of uh, holidays, isn't it? Which is great. Full of public holidays. It's, it's excellent. Uh, holidays and Easter eggs. What more could you want? That's exactly right. And hello, Michael. How are you going? Hello, everybody. It's been pretty awesome, hasn't it? Even the like our weather in Sydney has been pretty special, so... Yes, I very know. happy. I've been looking at the watching the weather uh, on the little iPhone weather app, and yes, the the southern states are starting to cool down, but uh, not too bad. We're up to about I think we get to about what seventeen to twenty seven or something. <laughs> I went out last week, got burnt. Can you believe it? But anyway, <laughs> then I saw some of the other like the real southern ones, like Canberra. They're already getting down to a minimum of fours. So I don't know what are they doing down there. It's crazy stuff. Crazy bit, stuff. Bit brisk. It is very brisk. All right, so uh, look, let's uh, just jump straight in, eh? Let's uh, go for the first story. Uh, Canberra's grammar's Canberra grammar code. Oh, I can't even say that. Canberra grammar's code cadets <laughs> get with the programs. Okay, that's the title. This is from the Canberra Times. Now, the Canberra grammar is one of only a few schools in the ACT to incorporate industry standard coding and app development into their curriculum. And apparently the parents and the, the headmaster and the community are seeing the results. So that's good. Now, on a recent field trip to the Apple store, students were able to show off their creations, including an iPhone app that can scan a barcode and estimate when the product will expire and another that translates dietary information. How cool is that? Now, I don't know. I'd, I'd have to uh, ask a question about that. Would the estimates when the product's going to expire the barcode, I didn't think barcodes had all the, that sort of detailed information in them. Uh, what, what would your experience be, Mike, with barcodes? I don't, I did, would you think they, they wouldn't have all that info in them, would they? Well, I actually haven't studied barcodes in the food, right, like the food area, so I, I don't actually know, to be honest. But wouldn't, um, you, wouldn't you think but, like a... Like for product-wise, product it, it doesn't change, but maybe there is something... Maybe there's more than one barcode that they're referring to. I don't know. Yeah, because normally you would think that, you know, a tin of peanut butter or something, that would just have a the, a barcode on it and that would be just the peanut butter barcode. So it, You it, would think, yeah. Yeah. So oh, it, it does say estimate. It doesn't say that it's correct. No, well, that's yeah, right. So estimate when the product will expire. Well, maybe. maybe it, it'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's only a guide anyway. So maybe it's. <laughs> that's right. Maybe it's something like, okay, so if it is peanut butter, then it just goes on the date, okay, the date that you've scanned it, well, if you're scanning it on the, uh, you know, the 22nd of April, well, then in in six months' time, that's going to be off, say. <laughs> well, it's only an <laughs> estimate, isn't it? But anyway, that's what they're doing down there. But uh, but that's that's sort of incidental. But that's 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 good that I think that the schools, and well, that school is starting to introduce uh, a curriculum yeah. like this. It's uh, it's probably about time. It's where we should be going. We shouldn't be, you know, worried about it's half of the arts and all this sort of stuff. We should be pushing people into coding and all this sort of stuff. So, um, so I, th I think hopefully the other schools around the place will get on board as well. Any schools down yeah. there, Michael? You're into the Apple education market. Is there any schools down where you are that that do this sort of stuff? I, I haven't actually heard of any that get in, like have a proper field trip, organise sessions within apple to actually go and see them i know apple put on uh training week training days during the school holidays at the apple stores mm -hmm. yeah but uh be, being as closely tied as that appears to be i haven't heard of anyone in sydney doing that does apple what put on uh put 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 uh, sessions on about coding yeah they, they have lots of lots of school holiday training for kids yeah, right. at, at all their stores 
Yeah, okay. Uh, well, that's all, all around the world, all around the world. When when there's school holidays on, there's a yeah. couple of special sessions every day. And how do you book into those? Are you just uh, log in with the app? There's an app, isn't there, where you book in for sessions? For sessions, yeah. It'll yeah. be on the... Yeah, web page or the app. So if you've got the... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. go to the web page and look for what session that you might be interested in and, yeah, go along and, and get involved. That sounds good. I wish I had it when I was little. <laughs> oh, I wish I had a computer when I was little. But it, well, what, well, what did I have? I think the best, the nearest thing I came to was a... Uh, a Tempest video game with Pong on it. I think it was about the only game that you could play, wasn't it? Pong. And, uh, yeah, but that's about it. That's about it. That's a long time ago. And the little paddles that you had. Yeah, but anyway. All right. Let's uh, keep going. Uh, Jace, what's uh, what's up with you? <laughs> what's, up, what, what's up with me? What's up with you? What what's, up you... With, what's up with Apple's very, very serious mobile payments push? So as we... May have suspected with, uh, I guess, what Apple have been doing slowly over time, building up that uh, big bank of um, people with Apple IDs and uh, iTunes accounts and that big uh, big lot of credit cards uh, in, 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 in place. And yes. I guess, it's, you know, with the iPhone 5S and that new fingerprint reader authentication that... Um, Finally, people may be able to use their device to purchase goods and services at brick and mortar businesses. Mm. Apple's reportedly begun interviewing senior level candidates to build an iTunes backed mobile payments business. Yeah, nice. So I think that we've thought that's coming uh, for a while now. And uh, I guess as a, you know, having the customers there, they've pretty much got an ecosystem there to, you know, to compete with. Not only the online, you know, around your PayPal, but I guess the more traditional ones like your Visa, MasterCard, American Express. So that could, if it takes off, um, you know, gather momentum very quickly mm. um, and potentially, you know, be a real competitor for um, the traditional, um, you know, people in that payments industry. Because if you look at... Uh, you look at what happens at the moment with cards and the cost of issuing, you know, even cards out to customers. Um, you have to have a payments terminal, which obviously is not going to be uh, is not going to be cheap, and you know, and all the, um, I guess, support around that. Um, you've got a customer who's rocking up with their own device, um, potentially scanning something or do, doing something to associate themselves with uh, with the store. So think of what you can do in the Apple store now. Mm. You, know, you just walk in with your app, scan the product and uh, authenticate it and say, yep, I'll buy that and walk out of the store. Um, you'd suggest there's a fairly uh, low cost base there as well. So it would be quite interesting to see, um, I guess, how Apple are going to sell that to merchants and brick-and-mortar stores and uh, uh, what, what the take-up will be. So is this where we're, is this like where we see, we might see, uh, you know, this is starting to be developed and then f the future, not too distant future generation of the iPhone might have the, one of those little, the, the NFC chips in them. Is that, is that the sort of thing that. Well, I, I, don't, I don't know about NFC. I don't, I don't, I don't well, think uh, no, Apple's no. on well, the NFC bandwagon. But that's what they, is that what they are? The where, where there's the chip in there where you can use it as a pay, as a pay sort of thing. Yeah, but uh, that that that's one that, that's one way of doing it. Um, I don't. Yeah, Apple don't really subscribe to that technology, so there'll be some way of identifying it. Maybe with your uh, eye beacon. Um, apparently, at uh, MacWorld, um, there was a lot around. Uh, you know, uh, eye beacon and uh, people that are starting to use it, sell product for it. So that might fit in to the uh, to the ecosystem somewhere that um, you that can identify. Who you are as a merchant, you know what you're, mm. you know what you're selling, and um, associates with a app on your phone to be able to make a purchase. So, do you think? Okay, so are you thinking that they're stepping outside the whole, like that they're going to create their own payment ecosystem? Like, well, so I've really got the ecosystem. I guess it's it's opening it up. Really, you know, they've got they've got the back end infrastructure and mechanisms to do it. Mm. Uh, they've got huge customer um, base there. So the fact they can come up with a winning proposition to uh, merchants. Um, and again, uh, you look at traditional card uh, fees in, in the whatever percents and however many dollars a month because you've got to pay your 
terminal rental and um, a cut for every transaction, Apple might come in and say, well, you know, the cost to us is negligible for adding you on as a merchant. We can, you know, offer a very, uh, you know, a very low percentage or um, um, fee. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, there's already a customer base out there. It's not as though we're starting up new with um, Apple credit cards or whatever where people have to go and get a credit card and, uh, you know, build up that uh, customer base. Um, so I, I think uh, yeah, it, so could, it could take off very quickly if, if, if positioned quick, uh, correctly and it's uh, uh, attractive um, uh, for the merchants. So like when you do go to Macca's or down, you know, down the pub for whatever reason, for a drink or whatever, so, so you go into Macca's and instead of you paying via your Visa card or whatever, there'll be a, a third option. So like cash, credit card, or iTunes, or something like that. Is that yeah. how, is that how you? Yeah, yeah, that's right. And again, I imagine it's something you're going to probably, uh, um, you know, scan or do something with your phone that um, says, "Yep, this is this is Macca's. Yes, it is um, four ninety five for your um, small mm. cheeseburger uh, meal with Coke." And uh, nice. I guess so if you got your iPhone five S, uh, yep, I'll put my um, finger on there and authenticate that and. Uh, yeah, you know, pretty much a wave and um, um, touch the uh, touch pad and uh, it's um, it's paid for. Yeah, what, yeah what, even if it's not fingerprinted, you can st- it'll still ask you for your iTunes password. Right. Yeah. So you know, it's it, that's the same as putting in your your pin number, isn't it? Yeah. So then, so it's all. So the money is going to go back to Apple. They're going to take a, a cut or whatever, and then they're just going to dis- redistribute that back out to the merchant, I guess. The merchant. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the yeah, the same yeah, scheme yeah, right. happens now and happens now if you're in the iTunes um, store, but mm. um, yeah, I suggest they won't be getting a thirty percent cut though. No, <laughs> it, would it, be, wouldn't. Uh, it would be much less than that. But uh, on my new um, yeah, four point seven inch uh, iPhone six with uh, <laughs> Touch ID, that uh, I think will work very nicely. Yeah, nice. But but half a percent of yeah, four million cheeseburgers every single day. Mm. Oh, yeah. that's and awesome. I think that's where they're going to come in. They're just going to make it, uh, um, you know, very attractive for merchants, and obviously sign some um, pretty big ones on quickly, like your McDonald's, um, like your major um, um, chain stores. So getting into Woolworths and Coles, you know, in in, in Australia, you know, um, momentum would gather very quickly if they uh, did that. Yeah, look, I think that's a that's a good idea. I'd be using it for sure. So yeah, so very good. So Michael, did you have any other thoughts on that? So you, you what? How long would it take? Would you foresee uh, between say now, Apple now are looking, uh, are looking to interview people to to you know to get this project underway? So how long before between now until you think you will be able to see something? Well, I would have thought they could almost turn it on now. It's just just getting people to negotiate with the stores like Woolworths and Coles and and the like around the world. To, do, do you to think, see. Michael, it would – do you think it would wait till WWDC, though, around the um, development and uh, APIs, et cetera, around it, that they'll be preparing for it now but look to announce it at WWDC because obviously you'd want to, uh, I guess, have the support and – things in place to say here's how it's going to work and you need to build this or leverage this api because that's going to allow you to sign up as a merchant and uh uh you know accept payments through your app or through this mechanism yeah. and, and they've even been known to introduce things at at wwdc and then six months down the track and say so and now you know why we introduced that api Without mm. actually saying at WWDC, this is a p- payments API. Yep, yep. But then that, it's quite obvious once you actually get down and they flick the switch that bang, it just all starts working. Mm. <laughs> They've done that before. Yeah. Okay. Well. Well. Look, I, that'd be interesting. I think that'd be a, a great thing. Like, I think the the credit cards and so forth. I think we'll see probably that they'll they'll just start disappearing. I reckon. You know, like everything's just going to be just chipped on your phone somehow. You know, because even now, you know, with your Woolworths petrol app or your Woolworths app, you can you can yeah. ch- even check your price of your petrol at your local store. You can tell what vouchers you are going to use. And I'll tell you where I used that the other day. We had this uh, we had this fifteen cent voucher on there for fifteen cents off the petrol. And, and so I said, well, I looked up and went, oh, that one's coming up next. So I didn't use it because in my car because mine's a little small car. I thought oh, I'll let Kim use that one because you know her car's more expensive to fill up. 
So that's a good app that will work up. But I can see everything like that. You know, why not just swipe your card, pay for stuff? Or you swipe your phone, I mean, pay for stuff. It's all good. Great. Yeah, just push the button, see you later. Boom. Can't <laughs> wait. Can't wait. All right. Now, what are we doing next? Oh, new products. Good stuff. All right. Now, the email just keeps flooding in with stuff coming to Australia and to, hopefully, into your pockets as an iPhone little Christmas present or something. But, uh, Michael, what have we, what have we learnt this week? What's, what's coming to our shores? Oh, well, I'm glad people have actually started to take up our offer and let us promote them. So uh, we don't make anything out of this. We don't ask for anything out of this. So it's just that um, we've been notified of some more new products through TNS Distribution this week. Um, They've got the new Can You Airframe, which are car air vent mounts for mobile phones. Mm. So you just clip it on and then it'll hold your phone in different sizes uh, for, your, for your different phones. That works. They, they work very well from what I've seen of reviews of other people. Oh, yeah. But we've also seen uh, Macworld Australia and a company called M Resell have got together to offer a buy and sell service for your Apple products. So you can get your secondhand Apple products uh, you can buy and sell them if you're ready to upgrade or you're looking for trying to get in early to get the maximum profit for your next iPad. Yeah. So that sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Now, now this is just, just launching, is it, this one? Yes. Yes. Because yeah, we've, we've been notified last week of it, just during the week of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So cause I'm just looking at the web page here now and, uh, yeah, we can see that there's, you know, displays and uh, uh, different categories like the iPads and the uh, Mac yeah. Minis. Oh, there is one. Mac Mini, one piece. All right, let's go in there and have a look. <laughs> Quick jump on and get it. <laughs> what have we got here? Now, we can have a look and see if this is suitable. Mac Mini Core 2 Duo, uh, 2 gig of RAM, 320 gig hard drive, good condition, $362. That's a good price. Yeah, so so this M re M resell, isn't it? So where's, where do we find yeah. this? com. So this is part of Macworld, is it? Oh, it's just just an agreement they've got to to promote each other. I think, yeah, yeah, right. So what happens? So the Emory sell they will purchase these goods. Well, some obviously the community as a as a individuals will will sell the, their their unwanted goods to Emory sell. They must then on sell to whoever. Well, wants I them. don't know whether it's that or whether it's like a YouTube, uh, sorry, an eBay type competitor. Oh, I see. What specializing you're in just in in th- this this bit of gear. Yeah, right. And maybe and maybe Mac will make a, a you know a dollar out of each sale or something for being associated with it. So. Oh yeah. So this one, this particular one here, the Mac Mini. So this is yeah. uh, the product has a warranty till the twenty third of the May two thousand fourteen. Buy an extended warranty, so you can still buy the extended warranty until twenty third the eleventh. Oh yeah, whatever. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So is that is that the older Mac Minis? From looking at it, it must be. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is, but it's still a reasonable price for you know for if you want to use it as an entertainment system. Mm. Yeah, so that's cool. I, I, um, I think it's a bit like a gazelle um, yeah. equivalent. Um, yeah. So, because just having a look here, it says sell your uh, you know, adult uh, adult product, Apple product. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a Freudian slip. There. Yeah, we know uh, what Jace yeah. does with his Mac Minis. <laughs> it looks quite good though. Any your product serial number. Fill out a few questions about the condition of your product at the end or receive a quote. If you accept the quote, you'll receive a prepaid way bill. Um, so that sounds to me similar to yeah. Gazelle. So on the Leo Gazelle, network, yeah. obviously, where they talk about that. So um, I, I was actually wondering the other day when that would come to Australia because it's, uh, um, you know, where it's promoted, idea. obviously, on Twitter, that, that they're talking about how many hundreds of thousands of customers and millions of dollars that they've, you know, generated. Mm. So it's obviously a popular... Well, it's a good uh, idea. Process to go through, and Apple stuff does keep its resale value really well. Because yeah. when you're looking for to buy an Apple product, like even when I went before, when I bought my, I think my Apple TV, then the Mac Mini, the iPad, the iPhone. Well, the first one of the first places I went to was the the second hand part on the Apple Store, the refurbished section. The refurbished section. That's not second hand. That's good Re- new stuff. Well, it's refurbished stuff. Yeah. It's refurbished. Yeah, but it's. Well, what's but you mean? look at it, so it's still a new new back, a new front. Oh um, yes. Oh yes. Yeah, it's no it's no knocked about bits. It's 
Oh no, no, but it's still. But no, what are they that, saying? That's that, where that, I go to buy stuff new. Yeah, yeah. So, so they're saying <laughs> that it, it was owned previously owned, but yeah. they've they've re they've if it, the front had a scratch on it, they put a new front on and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, cool. But it might have been you know, within that, that fourteen that days return. Yeah. Or... Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah, right. So. Yeah, so they wouldn't. I bought stuff through there, and yeah, it's just, it's as good as new, really, and it comes with a full Apple support and warranty. It just comes in a plain brown box rather than the funky box with a picture on it. I've noticed. Oh right, okay, right, okay, cool. So the, when if you took an Apple product back uh, within the fourteen days, are you saying that that then that becomes a refurbished model, or they wouldn't sell refurbished that refurbished model? Yeah. They wouldn't sell that again as a as a brand new model. No, but, it can't be. It's yeah. not brand new. Well, I guess not, but a lot of other places it's, it's, it's new, wouldn't they? Put a bit of spit on there and, and, and buff it up a bit. Give it a wipe, yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, look, just before we finish on this little segment, let's go back to these little, uh, uh, what are they? The air... air... Yeah, Kino airframes. Yeah, so... Yeah. Oh, so they clip onto the... Oh, yeah, I can see on the picture, on yeah. the picture now that uh, yeah, it clips onto the air vent uh, or air conditioner vent of your um, car and... That's how it uh, attaches yes. to the car to hold the, the phone. They look uh, look quite good. Look quite sturdy, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. The picture. yeah. yeah. How much are these little fellas? Does that say anywhere there? Because I know that well, I bought, look, I bought one of these things off eBay. You know, like, and admittedly, it was off eBay from Hong Kong. And it, it didn't really work for me. What too could well. go wrong with that? Well, that's right. <laughs> it, it sort of wasn't the, the it wasn't strong enough. Uh, a and then once I did finally get the 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 lugs in between because my my car must have small the space between the horizontal vents must be smaller uh, than normal. I don't know, but yeah, there's I don't, a lot of lines there. I don't, <laughs> a few problems, <laughs> as I always do. But uh, but I, if it looks like okay. Go and have a look at these now. If you want to uh, they're, go and have a look, thirty dollars, twenty nine ninety five each retail. It's not too bad, is it? That's not too bad. You'd you'd do that. You'd have a you'd have a go at that. Now it looks like it's a one size fits all by the look of it. It uh it looks like you you plug it in or you 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 fix it into your air conditioner vents and then it's got two little uh, left and right arm so to speak on it and you just squeeze them together. Yeah. Little yeah. lugs. Squeeze them together to to fit your phone. So that's that's uh yeah, good 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 good. Now if you want to have a look at these, can you buy them from this website? No, you might not be able to. They, they, they will tell you your closest reseller for sure, yeah. All right, we'll go and have a look at tnsdistribution.com.au. And for that other one, it's mresell.macworld.com. Right. Is it, .au. .au, is it? And I'm sure they'll end up in the show notes. They will yeah, end we'll up put in... them in the show notes. But I just gave it a go. Um, I just copied the serial number in for my iMac, and uh, it gave me a quote, and you can sort of uh, fill in a few questions there, and uh, it's all it's all pretty quick. Yeah, Excellent. right. Nice. So what was the quote like then, Jace? Was it was it reasonable or was it a bit low? No, it was a bit low. Uh, <laughs> Fifteen fifteen hundred dollars. And what would yours be worth? Love you to buy it new. I don't. Fifteen hundred dollars. <laughs> Probably about three thousand. Oh, well, well, they've got to make money out of it. And I suppose. What? Else, where else are you going to sell it? You know, you could probably try on the paper, cost you money. Try on eBay, cost you money. But anyway, this is not an ad for them, so let's um, <laughs> let's uh, leave that one there. Cool. <laughs> Sorry, Jace. We right. should get the minus the sponsor. Well, we could. We could have just give them a big wrap. All right. What do we got coming up? Oh. Right, when? What can I do when my Mac slows down? All right, here we go. Don't forget uh, Aussie Tech Heads. It's uh, also on the iTunes or on Phase FM. I think Phase FM Saturdays at 10 a.m. That's Eastern Standard Time. So Aussie Tech Heads, you can find their webpage at aussietechheads.com.au and you can do whatever you like over there. Show notes and live streams and YouTubes and everything. Everything. <laughs> Whatever you like. All right, so go and have a search for them, aussietechheads.com.au. Uh, now, is your Mac slowing down? Mine is slowing, I think, I feel. And as I mentioned last week, um, and after the show, I did go to the App Store and I was able to download the Mavericks as a, as a file. And, Jace, you were right. I could. Uh, it sat there and downloaded into the applications folder as a DMG 
file, install mavericks.dmg, I think it was. So um, I have got that for one one uh, rainy day when I've got nothing else to do, but attempt a Mac reformat. <laughs> but in the meantime, uh, Michael, you've given me some tips on, or everyone else, on how to to maybe speed up a slow Mac. Yeah, well, this this definitely makes a difference to, to machines. Um, as long as they they're not slowing down because they're physically hardware faulty, like the hard drive's starting to die, something like that. But um, it's just a couple of steps we go through. I've done it over the phone for people, and it, they're astounded that it actually makes a difference. So, um, so you first you just shut down your computer. That way, you know that there's nothing going to be interfering mm. with, with what we do next. Then we start the Mac and we hold down the command and the S for SAM key together. You've right. got to do that straight away. As soon as you hear the ping, command S, boom, and you keep holding them down until text appears on the screen. Okay. So then you then you let go and when the text all stops moving, about, lo- about four lines from the bottom, there'll be a forward slash SBIN forward slash FSCK space minus FY. And right. you, you type that in as you see it, press return. It'll come back saying checking hierarchy, checking link files, checking blah, blah, blah. 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 Yep. And, it, and it might take might take five minutes. It might take, like I've I've known it take over an hour in some cases. Oh, just as well I didn't um, do it before the show. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and then it, it'll finish in saying the dish Macintosh HD or whatever the name of your startup drive mm. is, but generally Macintosh HD appears to be okay. So then you type, just type the word reboot, press return, and the machine will start up properly again. When it's rebooted and you go into where it says finder up the top left-hand side, you select utilities from the go menu. You select disk utility. When that comes up, the left-hand column, there's Macintosh HD, and then you select that. Then you click on repair disk permissions. And again, that might take five minutes. It might take twenty-five minutes, mm. and it might stick on one minute to go for. It does. <laughs> I haven't found anyone that it sticks on one minute to go for ages and ages and ages. Mm. Just one of those things. That's um, what they do. And then when that's finished, it'll. When that's finished, you just restart your Mac, and ninety-nine percent of people notice a difference straight away. Well, just by running that that process well i'm going to do that process and the very detailed and and uh and uh consumable notes you've written <laughs> down there michael so thank you and they'll they'll be in the in the show notes i'll see maxzone.com.au show notes uh so yeah so that looks pretty good now what what does it actually do this little thing it looks like it's it's repairing disk permissions so why uh disk permissions why will they slow down or how do they become corrupt or what's in, why are they so important what are they well if if you've a if you've ever had a crash it could have been writing something to it to the permissions um when it had the crash other when you're installing apps it may try and change them for whatever reason uh it, it's basically going through and making sure all the settings for the folders are set the way that apple expects them to be set the right. you know, the read write permissions, the grip permissions. So if they're who not who can access, who can't access it. Yeah. So if they're not set right, how does that slow it down? Because the computer gets will it skip that file or it can't get there? Yeah, it'll go, it might, it'll go there and then it may try to read it and then go no that one's not working. We'll go to the next one, try and read it. Right. No, that's not working. We'll go to the next one. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. So okay. So that's that's pretty good. So I'm I'm going to do that after after. We record, finish recording this, I think. It, uh, it, it's a reasonably simple process as long as you just follow the steps nice and slowly. And yeah. Read them, read them, print, yep. maybe print them out because you won't be able to read them on the computer or put them on your iPhone, read those while you're actually going through the process. Yep. Or you could stop, start Michael, his, his, his audio tutorial <laughs> <laughs> that, we've, that he's just done. So, yeah, so that's, that's pretty cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. Now, this, so you would do this before you would format. I would imagine because this is a be a quicker and easier thing to do. Well, if you if you think there's something wrong, you just run with that, and you definitely notice a difference. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. But but if you if you if you are going to format, 
start from absolute scratch, then you don't have to do any of that. No, no. Because well, you're wiping it out anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, as I, said, I just said before, I've got the file, the DMG install file. I've just got to work yeah. out how to put it onto a, say, a USB. And I suppose the USB has to be a bootable Mac no, USB. No, well, what you, you, you just, um, there's a program called Lion Disk Maker, and it works for Lion, Mountain Lion, Mavericks. Right. And it, it'll create a USB stick for you with all, and do all the right thing for you. You would think, free. Yeah, okay. Why wouldn't, would you think, it, would, you know how you get on the PC side of things, you've got Dells and the HPs and all that, and they, that, that you know, you push F3 or something as it boots up, and then there's, there's a hidden petition with the operating system on it. Like, has Apple ever thought about doing something like that? So you don't, you wouldn't have to. No, but Apple's already, Apple's got that from Lion onwards. Oh, okay, right. So, okay. So, you access that by holding down the option key when you start the machine. Right. Yeah, so that's a restoration um, petition, and uh, yeah. you can even, so even boot off the internet yeah. um, boot doing off that the if, internet, that's right. if your machine isn't uh, in a good state. Okay, but so, however, though, so now that I've upgraded to Maverick. That, and if I was to do one of those petition resets, obviously that's going to go back to Lion or whatever it was when I bought it. Well, that that yeah, that gives you a choice of installing Lion mm. as a, as a clean install. Yeah. Or um, yeah, that or, or doing you know, it's got disk repair, it's got install Lion, it's got right. a few things on there. Okay. All right. Well, let me uh, let let's do try this one this week. And we'll, we'll see how he goes. And then when I get to the format, we might do a little format tutorial as well if we if we can get that together because that sounds – Yeah. There's heaps of, <laughs> lot of, heaps of questions about but, format. But so, certainly try that and you, you may you may think that you don't need to put Mavericks on there. Yeah, oh, I've got Mavericks on there now. I just wanted to – yeah, but I'm going to try this to try and speed it up a bit because I thought yeah. – I, what I thought was my problem was getting was that because the machine – has had never been formatted, obviously, and it's, what, a couple of years old. And then the disk drive had stopped functioning because it actually got full and then stuff just wasn't working. So I had to get in there and delete stuff. I'm thinking, well, you know, there, there's a lot of, just probably a lot of rubbish on this drive and it's probably just, you know, just just gets chockers with just rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> it's just unwanted stuff and, well, you know, whatever. So I thought, well, I'm, yeah. And I just thought it was sluggish. So I'll try this before yeah. I format. Cool. And uh, so we'll do a format tutorial soon. All right. Well, that's good. I'm going to try that tonight. <laughs> Let it go. All right. What are we up to now? Oh, where's the mouse? Google Ad Search. Oh, okay. Now, Google In Ads and Search. Oh, yes. Okay. When, you, when you're doing a search and the ads that come up. Yep. Cool. Is that all right, Jace? Yeah. Did I yep. write it out enough for you to understand? Yeah. Weird. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it is weird. And I suppose you're probably right with your answer. Uh, let's go. And facebook.com forward slash Aussie Tech You'll find there just about every day, just about a free iOS app that normally you would pay for. So I've been pumping them out this week, been uh, doing one for the kiddies because I know they're on holidays and, you know, you want to just uh, give them a, the iPhone just for five minutes so you can sleep in that extra bit longer and they can go away and play Angry Birds or something. So uh, check out the facebook.com forward slash Aussie Tech Heads for a free iOS app of the day. Okay, now, Jase, you've got a bit of a weirdo question. And uh, well, a weirdo well, question. <laughs> well, that, that's not very nice to uh, call our <laughs> listeners weirdos. It's a, it's it's a question sent in um 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 from a listener. But not um, by a weirdo. Just before we just before we get to that, um, just to let everyone know that uh, iTunes uh, vouchers are twenty percent off Coles this week until the twenty ninth of April. Um, just Ooh. keeping a eye on that. So uh, if you're running low on iTunes credit, <laughs> and um, I think get into Coles. Well, that's actually a decent one because sometimes they're at. Uh, Weird stores and have weird offers around them, but um, Coles tend to be pretty, and Woolworths tend to be pretty good with their offers. So, well, that's well, one to uh, have well, in for at the moment. Well, while you're talking about discount vouchers, I hear that if you go to Woolies, you can get thirty percent off Skype vouchers. So there you go. You can go and do the Skype as well. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're lucky enough, like I am over here at Rabina, you got Woolies on one side of the 
the mall and then you walk across and you've got Coles. They face each other. <laughs> oh, you do a clean sweep. Clean, yeah. clean sweep of your vouchers. That's right. You can. But anyway, how, let's get back, okay, to, back to... Okay, back to our questions. <laughs> Please. So, um, listeners sent in um, um, a question this week asking if we could explain why when two people do a search for the same thing in Sydney, i.e. Mo- mobile auto repairs Sydney, as a uh, uh, Google search, Vodafone gave Sydney answers, but Optus gave mostly Melbourne answers. So we, we were on the um, job, weren't we, Glenn? We did a little bit of uh, research. We and, did. Uh, we contacted Google, who, although polite, could not get into specifics. <laughs> it's something to do with their secret Google formulas. Well, they would, they um, would, they would, they were going to talk to us, but then they would have had to have killed us, killed us. So <laughs> if they told us the answer, <laughs> so we said, uh, no, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Optus told their customer to uh, do a network reset to see if uh, that made a, a, a difference, because obviously being in um, Sydney, um, Melbourne um, answers to auto repairs weren't going to help them much, um, but that made no um, change. So. Um, I don't know, Michael. What uh, what are your thoughts around that one? Well, I just my my guess would be that maybe Optus were having some DNS issues, and on their on their Sydney DNS servers, maybe they were like super busy, um, had fallen over or something like that. <laughs> so that they were the, the customers were being pushed into the Melbourne DNS instead of the Sydney one, the DNS server. So yeah. The, yeah, it's probably something to do with location awareness, um, yeah. Um, yeah. isn't it? And it's almost like if you are um, uh, on a corporate network and, uh, you know, you might be sitting uh, over in Perth and your head office is in um, Sydney and all your internet tunnels at a proxy server in Sydney, uh, you'll get Sydney-centric um, 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 answers because uh, yeah. Google try and do a clever thing and think that you're, um, you know, you're uh, coming out um, in Sydney. So it's probably something associated around that, isn't it, that um, through... DNS or uh, I, 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 it could also be IP because some of the um, um, I know it's now I swear. Well, we're meant to have run out of um, um, IP addresses um, in IPv4 years ago, and uh, oh, they still say that every hasn't year. What happened? <laughs> but but also um, obviously there being a shortage of um, proper internet uh, IP addresses, if you like. Um, a lot of the carriers are uh, actually giving you a um, you know like a ten dot address or something like that, and obviously they're then. Um, either proxying you or, um, um, yeah, they're natting you through somewhere and uh, you need to go through their network device somewhere. So that could skew things a little bit as well if, um, in that case, the uh, Optus person, although they were in Sydney, was getting directed through, you know, out through um, network hardware in Melbourne and Google, you know, thought that that was just, the uh, case. Yeah, just, it has to be something network-related diverting to Melbourne. Right? That, that's, that's, I can't imagine anything else. For whatever reason, how it's diverting the network, but yeah, yeah, well, it has to be coming out of Melbourne somewhere. Yeah, yeah, it's a fu- it's a funny one though because they have got the word Sydney uh, in the search, which normally um, should should help matters, you would think. <laughs> yeah, but it was definitely definitely happening because I was watching it happen. Yeah, right, right. Well, I would imagine. Yeah. Ooh, uh, I would imagine that. Yeah, I'd say. So, did you? So, if you were watching it happen, were the these were iPhones? Did you check the iPhone for location awareness on and all this sort of stuff? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so location awareness was on, so the phone knew where it was. Yeah, okay. I think you're probably on the right. So, you're on the right thing there. Yeah. On the DNS. Yeah. yeah. So somewhere it must have been somehow being pushed to Melbourne to Optus in Melbourne for whatever reason, and, and Google had to think that it was coming out at a Melbourne end. Hmm. So. Mysterious, because I know when you, uh, if you, even on your desktop, you know Google knows where you are. Yeah, like if you've signed into uh, Google, if you've signed into the actual Google ecosystem, then it just knows where you are and you do a search and it brings back your relative research and that's on the desktop. Uh, but yes. that, that can still be, it can still think that you're at, uh, ne- not necessarily Ribuna, Ribuna in, in your case. Like well, it I bet be, it's a chase, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it, it thinks that I'm, you know, I've seen where they think that I'm a Chipping Norton, which is nowhere near me, but that's basically where um, my internet service provider is located. Yeah, yeah, well, because I know... You most- said, look on my phone and uh, done the old what is my IP, 
And yeah. uh, from Telstra, it's given me a real IP address, which is nice of them. No proxy detected, and it's saying that I'm in uh, I'm in Adelaide. My ISP is Telstra. But um, look, I'd still say potentially if um, you know you were getting um, given a private you know uh, IP address, you know, much like you would at home, and uh, the carrier is natting you, that um, you know may cause some interesting uh, issues if um, you know depending where they're poking you out uh, on the internet and their network. Yeah. One other thing that I did did learn in the research too was um, I don't know about other accounts, but I know Telstra, if you're a prepaid account, you'll have an internal IP address. And if you're a postpaid account, you'll have an external IP address. So that's just no, one that's other interesting. thing to watch out for. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Well, I've just done my IP address on my phone as well. It doesn't tell me where I am, but it gives me the, oh, it's Wi-Fi. So yeah, that's probably, it's giving me, yeah. that. that's why I recognize the IP address. All right. Good stuff. <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah. So look, it's probably some DNS uh, issue and who, and, and God knows DNS is, give you many issues. <laughs> so, all right. Now, Michael. Oh, you've got a tip of the adult tip of the week. What is it? Yeah, it's Siri again. Maybe oh, people Siri. are getting sick of it, but I love Siri. I'm getting more and more used to it as time goes on. She's a good old stick. Um, yeah. So if you're unsure about what Siri can do, hold down the home button until you get the little Siri screen come up, then touch the, the little question mark on the bottom left-hand side of the screen, and then uh, you could, it, it'll give you a list of questions that she'll answer, a couple of pages of different different sort of things you can ask or how to open an app, etc. But an example I used this week just while I was driving was how many litres is 40 gallons? Yeah. And after a couple of seconds, it comes back with an answer. Nice. And then another one was how many inches in 2.3 metres? A couple That's of right. seconds, comes back with an answer. So you don't have to think, you don't have to type anything in. Don't have to remember. Twenty five point four millimeter is an inch. Yeah, well, let, let's, and then, let's have a let's go. Hang on. Uh, How many kilometers are in five miles? Looking. Oh, she she does go away. She's getting her calculator out. That's right. Oh, she doesn't speak. Five miles the converts to about eight point zero five kilometers. Oh, that's nice. There you go. And you, and you also recommend you got to say thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Siri. I aim to please. Oh, you're a good girl. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so right. always, just to be polite. No? <laughs> well, that's, that's right. And if you want to have some extra, extra fun, be rude to her. <laughs> <laughs> Talk dirty, see what happens. All right. Well, I think that uh, brings us about to the end of the show. And uh, once again, so it's, it goes fast, don't they? <laughs> oh, I didn't mention about my Anzac thing. Now, I'm not sure when you guys are going to be listening to this. But uh, anyway, uh, Anzac Day, we know, is this week uh, on April the 25th. And instead of, like, donating, like, throwing money at them this year, you can actually ring up and get some – you can get a minute's silence. And it costs you $2. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yes <laughs> – <laughs> That's right. That's pretty much pretty much it. Uh, if you just Google, I'm sure you'll be able to find it. Just Google Anzac Day promotion, ring up for silence or something like that. Uh, yeah, so you'll be able, you can ring them up, and all it is is uh, there's different on the web page. They say like uh, six or nine squares, each with an old digger in the in the square. And then when you mouse over it, you actually hear their silence. If you know what I mean. So so one guy sitting on the bed. So you hover over him and then you will hear, say, the bus in the background or another guy, you might hear the, the school bell or something, you know what I mean? So it's they're just they're there silent, but it's just you you can hear in the background the world going around. But uh yeah, so if you don't do it off the webpage, ring up and, and pay your two dollars and that all that goes towards the to helping a, a vet. So that's a good that's that's always good. So a uh, very worthy cause indeed. Oh yes, yes. extremely worthy. So hopefully uh, everyone's able to get to some sort of uh, march or some sort of do on Anzac Day. And if you can't, just uh, if you can take the time out to remember, uh, yeah, what, what the day's all about and, and what these people have given up for us to be able to sit here and do this type of thing. So uh, for that, we will be eternally grateful. Thank you. 
All right. So I think that brings us to the end. So thanks for coming in, Jace. It's been no worries. great. I've got a little, okay, I've got a little um, recommendation before we go. Yes. Um, just for someone to follow on Twitter that's uh, quite uh, funny. Um, so there's a uh, – I'll put it in the show notes – um, there's a Twitter account called 50 Sheds of Grey um, oh. rather than 50 Shades of Grey. <laughs> I don't know if you guys are aware of it, but uh, he, he, he's quite funny. And, I ha- and there, there is one here which is, um, which is Twitter-related. So uh, the, the, the quote is, it's so long she squealed. I don't think it's going to fit. Sorry, I said, but it isn't easy saying what you want in 140 characters. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. It's it, it's quite it's quite an amusing little little account. So uh, I'll pop that in the in the show notes. But uh, um, yes, some, right. uh, good stuff. All right, good humour there. Thanks, Jace. Well, we'll see you next week. So take it easy. Have a good week. Absolutely. Thanks, and Michael. Uh, just before you go, we've got a from the lounge. We've got a PA in the lounge. Just going back to your uh, thing about the 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 uh, phones and you know searching in Melbourne and Sydney yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, he said it is geolocation on mobile network which thinks your IP is in Melbourne, and it's not the DNS. And so he must have had, uh, trust me. So he must have had a, a sit and looked into it beforehand. So there you go. That could be anything. All right. Don't know. Yeah, if the phone's <laughs> never been to Melbourne, I don't know. Hmm. All <laughs> right. Well, thanks for coming in, Michael. We'll see you next week. Have a good week. Yeah, and, looking uh, forward to it, everybody. Whatever Thank you, you may get up to, good stuff. And you can find the show notes at theaussiemaxzone.com.au and also Michael's little t- little tidbits of uh, news each day as he puts them up onto theaussiemaxzone.com.au. All right. Well, that's it. So have a good week, everyone, and we'll see you next week. Uh, bye-bye for now. Ta-da. 